So for my informal vlog today, I thought I'd discuss something that, uh, that I've brought up many times, um, and I'll probably do like a fuller video on all the subjects I discuss in these vlogs, but there was another, you know, shooting, uh, recently, and I feel like it's pertinent to bring this up because yet more people are bringing up, um, the, the, the gun control topic as a result of it. And uh, I think it's valuable to understand the subject from alternate perspectives. Um, and my gun control never perspective normally turns some heads because even if you're like a gun-toting Republican, you usually advocate at least a little bit of gun control um, or at least advocate for it without knowing it. Like, it's, it's pretty funny when a Republican advocates for such people as Reagan, when Reagan was partially responsible for yet more anti-gun legislation, or the NRA, which you could say the same thing about. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty funny when the, those are their paragons of gun justice, you know. And, uh, like, there are many points to bring up here, and, like, this video is, like, not gonna bring up all of them. But I think that, uh, that there are four salient points to bring up. Um, and that is that government detracts evil people, gun control doesn't work, gun control is racist, and gun control worsens the problem. So, let's start with the root here because striking the root is useful. The root of gun violence is not the existence of guns, any more than video games cause violence because there's video games in them. The existence of something that you can use to create violence does not inherently create violence any more than the kitchen knives in your kitchen create stab victims. It requires a person. Now, what does that person do in order to get into that headspace? Um, well, normally, it's social issues, right? It's social issues. It's issues that have pushed them to a limit and then over that limit. Now, you can say that, uh, that you think that, uh, that it's reasonable to control them prior to that limit. And, you know, whatever, there's an argument to be made there at least. But, like, uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean that, uh, that that control will stop them from going past that limit. And it also doesn't mean that, uh, that that limit couldn't have been prevented to begin with. Now, there are a lot of social issues here that, that are at play, uh, but I think one of the primary social issues is the fact that uh, a lot of the places where these are, uh, kids grow up lacking proper role models, and uh, kids grow up in environments that don't respect them. Uh, the public school system is a fucking churn. It, it destroys the soul. It, it fucks with your head. It forces conformity and encourages uh, attacks from the group to the individual and not vice versa. Uh, it encourages people to treat each other as basically not human uh, in an attempt to bring like some sort of cohesion with the group and prevent people from questioning what's being taught to them. Um, it's indoctrination. It's the, the school system. It's imported uh, from pr like the Prussian model to indoctrinate people into national servitude. And it works. It really does. I was res reminded of that today uh, when a bunch of high schoolers removed me from their Discord server because I had the audacity to disagree with them about masks. The, uh, the mentality in general was that since I wasn't conforming, since I wasn't doing what they wanted, uh, it didn't matter that I wasn't breaking server rules, they were still going to remove me. Now, I don't necessarily blame these kids. They're kids, you know? But it really highlights uh, and exemplifies the, the groupthink mentality uh, inherent in um, the... the I guess you could call it system, um, system man, and it uh, it ultimately ends up with people who 
feel like either the victors, because they sided with the group, and because they enforced the group's policies, whether or not they were reasonable, or the odd man out the defenseless person against the group who has to get revenge. And a lot of the time, that results, uh, whether or not that person is being reasonable, in very unreasonable action. Um, and in a lot of those cases, a lot of those cases where somebody was bullied, somebody was ignored, somebody was abused at home, somebody was you know, <laughs> tormented by their local church, somebody was, uh, had their identity rejected, somebody was mistreated by the system at large and by those who perpetuate the system. Um, and the system itself, which they were told that they needed to run to if things ever happened to them, was also the system that was helping their oppressors, or at least who they viewed to be their oppressors. This is the case in a lot of these cases, um, where some terrible act of violence happens. And I'm not saying that excuses it, but what I am saying is that it doesn't address the root cause to ban guns. Uh, the root cause of it is a lack of proper role models and a lack of good social structure uh, combined with the antagonism they feel came to them. And whether or not that's reasonable is, is like a case by case subject, you know, like a lot of these people were bullied. A lot of these people were victims in one way or more and simply ignoring the human element of it so that you can have your fucking, uh, virtue signal session, your two minutes hate, doesn't actually prevent more deaths. Um, and it doesn't actually, like, solve the problem in any meaningful way. And uh, ultimately, when you actually want to solve the problem, you need to try to understand so that you can prevent it. You need to know of the trap in order to successfully circumvent it. And in this case, uh, one of the key factors that leads to crime um, is sort of the lack of presence of positive role models, and that oftentimes manifests in a lack of two-parent households. Parents weren't prepared when they had children. Uh, they had children when, when they weren't ready, and when they weren't ready to adequately raise them. And their kids grew up in a household without a person to reflect uh, different values than a single person. And also, that person oftentimes either had to rely on the system um, by constantly getting support from the government, or they had to be the sole breadwinner in, like, in the situation, and they had to, you know, basically spend their time working rather than parenting, rather than being there for the child. Um, so responsible fucking and, you know, proper child rearing, not rearing them with devices um, so that they can get all their views from alternative sources and you can blame video games for your kids' outbursts and violence, um, but actually being there with your child and interfacing with your child and understanding them. Um, that's, that's what's necessary. Now, what does gun control do? It is the pretext for the prison industrial complex along with the war on drugs. These sorts of prohibitions primarily target men um, and primarily target disproportionately men of color. They break up families. They put dads in jail. And they do all of this while stealing money from common people in the form of asset forfeiture and a heavy police presence in, like, poor communities. Like, Black Lives Matter uh, recently tweeted that, yeah, you know what? Not only did Biden give us the shaft and basically lose our number after the election, but he uh, made things worse. It was better under Trump. <laughs> that should tell you something. It should tell you that it's always going to get worse. You're never going to have a political savior, no matter what you do. And... 
the police presence in your neighborhood will get worse because it's always going to. They need places to sink their budget and they want their budget to continue to expand instead of contract um, <laughs> because it's a, it's, it's a for-profit scheme. So they'll spend money on ridiculous shit, not effective training and de-escalation, um, but like, you know, exclusive exotic training in places like Israel and also a bunch of toys to be sent home, like bear cats and shit. Um, and, you know, th they'll do all this stuff um, <laughs> while ignoring the fact that they're making these sorts of situations worse or... They don't care because they're in on that and they don't mind the fact that they're fucking up communities. They get to keep their stable job and claim that the crime problem is getting worse, all while helping make it worse. Like, it's proven. You lock a dad up, the family is going to have a significant hard time raising those children. Um, so even if you're prepared as a family, even if you do everything right, they can still lock up like a member of the family and fuck up the dynamic. Um, the state has broken so many homes, so many homes, and they've like created this culture um, with their corporate like consumerist bullshit of devices raising kids. So don't be surprised when your kid turns into the sort of person who would be violent. And additionally, you know, it's definitely racist. It primarily targets black people. Gun control does. Uh, and, it, it, like, historically, the legislation has been targeted at uh, black people. Like, it was originally designed to... Well, I mean, some of the legislation was originally designed to prevent Black Panthers from marching uh, with open carry and shit. Um, you know, it, it's, it's deeply problematic. And the fact that any liberal supports it proves that they're not effective leftists because even Marx said under no pretext, you know? Um, <laughs> most effective leftists will tell you that disarming the poor is not a good way to address systemic violence and it's not a good way to address single issues of violence either. Now, they may disagree with me partly on the root causes, but I kind of doubt that, to be honest, since I blame consumerism partly. Also, somebody's shoveling gravel next door, I guess. Um, but, like, the general point I'm trying to make is that, like, the system is what's causing the problem to begin with in the vast majority of cases. Not just, you know, in terms of education, not just in terms of consumerism and, con and encouraging irresponsible fucking, not just in terms of the prison industrial complex, but also, you know, the pharmaceutical industry constantly pilling up the brain instead of addressing these problems. Hey, you know... <laughs> We've, we've got a pill for your ill. If, if, if we think something is wrong with you, we will just medicate you instead of actually solving the problem. So, like, this all compounds to create a situation where, yeah, violence is going to happen. Again, not endorsing it, you know? I'm just saying that this is how it happens. And if you don't address the root causes of these issues, you're not going to get anywhere real. You can feel good about yourself while you ban guns, but like, then you gotta admit, it doesn't work. Gun control, especially if it's not universalist, doesn't work. Um, and especially now when you can 3D print whatever you want, it doesn't work. Gun control doesn't work. People can get around it. It's like the the age old thing, you know. Oh, there's a gun uh, there's a gun free zone sign. I guess I can't go in here. Well, sure they can, and they do all the time. And then when I get to these points, the typical reply is, "You just want evil people to have guns." Insert group I don't like to have guns. No, because those people would likely probably be better served in the society that I'm talking about anyway and be less likely to lash out. Additionally, um, <laughs> the, the state attracts those evil people. Insert group that is bad is attractive to the state because the state has all the wherewithal to hide their actions and help them get away with it or legitimize their actions. 
by making it seem like what they're doing is noble. Ultimately, not only does gun control not work, but it helps those people who are attracted to that centralized position of power reify their evil. It helps the evil people. That's what it does. Right? So, the whole notion that you can, like, control guns away and suddenly violence will stop happening is a fantasy. And it's a fantasy fed to you by the kind of person who wants you to be completely disarmed in case the state comes for you. To be completely unable to defend yourself should you have to at some point. That's the real truth. That's the real truth. So when people say gun control now in response to a mass shooting, they're not addressing the roots, they're poorly addressing the symptoms, and they're not solving the problem. They're making it worse, and they're helping people who want to make it worse get away with it. So I just, I feel like, you know, there's, there's more to this subject. I'm not going to leave it here, right? But, like, this is an informal vlog. I just, I feel like it's good to point this out and really hammer it home because most people don't think about it in these terms. And as a result, they end up thinking that anybody who a advocates against gun control is somehow some sort of nutcase or evil. But the truth is that a lot of us have thought this stuff through and just don't think that gun control is the solution. And you wouldn't know that if you didn't get into a conversation with us. You know, banning people from servers and shit might be preferable to those with weak minds, but, like, those of you who have, like, a prefrontal cortex and a functioning brain uh, have a much greater likelihood of accepting an honest conversation uh, with people. And I think that, like, having this honest conversation could help. Um... And it's in that spirit that uh, I'm going to announce I am starting a debate channel soon. Um, and I'll post the, the channel link uh, in, in a future vlog. But I have somebody who's agreed to be a, a semi-regular moderator. Um, and if you decide you want to have a constructive, moderated debate, not one of those debates on channels like Superpower Broadcasting or whatever that Kevin Castley idiot does, um, but actual debates, thoughtful debates, with, like, logical fallacies avoided and structure and statements and shit, uh, feel free. But ultimately, like, if you want to debate me on gun control, feel free to hit me up if you actually think you have a case. But, you know, ultimately, I don't think you'll get anywhere because the ethical case to be made here isn't to control guns. It's to make society better. You know, it's like Rat Park with drug addiction. You're not going to get anywhere by caging the rats in better cages. Well, more efficient anyway. You improve their lives and they want the addiction less. You improve their lives and they want the violence less. The economy is in a downturn. Uh... The elites have proven that they don't care about you, that they would rather spend money on bombs than stimulus checks. They've proven that they'll lie straight to your face, even if you're allegedly fighting the supervillain they created, which was Trump. They'll, they, they've proven cohesively that they don't give a fuck about you. You know, that's why they didn't like people like Michael Jackson. It's not because of anything he allegedly did. Um, the elites love people like Epstein, and they have no problem with people even, like, approaching the specter they gave Michael Jackson, which was never proven, by the way, and he's been acquitted. So I'm pretty happy about that, because it seemed like there was no proof against him. That's a vlog, I guess, for another day. But, like, uh, when, when it comes down to it, uh, people form these connections in the state to truly awful people, right? They don't care about, like, <laughs> stopping crime. They're not on your side. They care about reifying their power in any way that they can. And in this particular case, they do it by stripping arms from the hands of the poor people while ignoring the amount that they fucked the poor people over 
or actively doing it more to exacerbate the situation and create enough chaos that their Oro Abkeo model can work. Their problem reaction solution model can work. So I just thought I'd give people some something to think about in that regard. Uh, disjointed rant or two. I can't say never hurt anybody, but, but maybe this one will hurt the state's propaganda. And that's what I care about. Anyway, speaking of that, this is sponsored by Opsec Drip. Feel free to check out his channel right here and uh, subscribe to let him know that his money went somewhere good. Um, it's uh, 240 pixels of Shemog born libertarian action. News that you can listen to in bite-sized chunks. So feel free to go subscribe. Smash the state.